Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Louis D'Souza. Today is Monday, August the 3rd, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time. Wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we are Amy Blackford list today. She has a family issue she has to deal with, but she's going to be tuning in. And I know she's going to be very excited about coming back to join us next week. But today, Louis, it's like old times again. It's just you and me again. We can handle that. No, no. <laughs> How are we going to survive? <laughs> I hope you had a great weekend. I know I did. I was just uh, lazing on the beach and just uh, just sighing out all of the resistance that had been building up. It felt really good. Yeah, we we also went to the beach on Friday because it was my birthday. Happy and, birthday, belatedly. Ah, thanks. And, uh, you know, we had such a relaxing, beautiful day at a new beach. Which a we new tried beach, out. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, there were white cliffs, um, sand, a lot of sand, um, <laughs> kind of like a, a bay protected area, beautiful water. And there were lots of um, uh, what do they call those play those pools where you can look for crabs and oh, I know what you're talking about. Rock pools, rock pools. Yeah. yeah. So there were a lot of rock pools there. So the kids were really into all that and. Um, yeah, then afterwards we, we had a beautiful dinner at a Thai restaurant, which was amazing, really beautiful um, staff, atmosphere, people, incredible food, you know, and it was just very, you know, it's one of those things that the day just went spot on. And then as we were driving back for one and a half hours from the beach to, to London again, um, we had this incredible sunset. Ooh, nice. And I mean, you can see the, well, maybe I can put some pictures up on Facebook, but there were some incredible pictures just through the window of the car wow. of this amazing sunset. And then as soon as I saw that sunset, I remembered, oh, of course, my dad died a year ago. Oh. And it was like my dad speaking to me. It was like, sure. oh, this is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Yeah. Plus, I have to say, you get a good Thai restaurant. Thai is delicious food. Mm. Really, really good. It's it's like a taste bud extravaganza. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, because there's so many different flavors. I mean, Southeast mm. Asian food in general is always very, very good. But Thai food in particular, there's something about yeah, the way Thai, thai takes the cake. Are. Absolutely, yeah, really, really good. Yeah, so, especially well, when it's like, a good restaurant. <laughs> that sounds like a great Friday, a great birthday. I'm telling you. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I was exhausted and fell asleep and. Um, <laughs> And then yesterday we had um, family around for, for my, you know, because they couldn't meet, meet us with the beach and all the rest of it. Mm. Uh, came to the house and we had a really nice time then. Beautiful. Um, but I wanted to talk about what happened to me last night because ah, okay. it's, it's a fascinating experience which brings up a lot of things about LOA. So um, I'll paint a scenario. We had the lovely meal, which we just talked about, um, barbecue. Uh, actually, it wasn't a barbecue. It was a poiki, which is oh, um, like those big steel iron pots that they had in the old days that they put over the fire and they throw all their food in and then you just oh. wait for it to cook and you eat it. So okay. um, it, it was one of those. And, you know, the meat was so tender and mm. the vegetables were put in at the right time so they were, like, not too soft and nice, crispy. And, yeah, I mean, and, and the... The, the potatoes had absorbed all this beautiful um, juices from everything else. And oh, it was just delicious. Mm -hmm. So um, it wasn't that because none of the other family was affected, but I started feeling at, in the night really terrible. Wow. Um, and so I've, <clears throat> I have, th there's a lot of things I need to explain. First of all, you know, I've got a huge repertoire of, tools at my disposal to help me heal yes you do and um what i was doing was thinking what do i want to use for this one i can feel that it's something in my gut it seems to be poisoning my system a little bit um i'm getting that typical headachey type feel to the whole thing um and the thing that flashed through my mind was was <laughs> which is interesting um what well, was twist the spine, move the spine, get it flexible, do it in every shape and form, just get the spine moving. Mm -hmm. So I was doing every different type of yoga and movements, and I've got a whole range of things that I can do for the back, egoscue, um, and all the rest of it. So I'm doing all these things. 
and slowly I'm getting a little bit worse, a little bit worse. And um, then I start bringing up. So I bring up a little bit, not a lot, mm. just a little bit. So I didn't empty my guts. And so, you know, I, I decide to do what they do in Austria. <laughs> in Austria? Which is which is fascinating because I didn't believe this worked because, you know, I've got all my knowledge and all the rest of it. And <laughs> I, I wouldn't need this. But they, they take a little thing of schnapps and they drown it. And it either makes you bring up or it settles your stomach. Okay. And I've proved that this is effective again and again. So I went downstairs, had a bit of schnapps. And, you know, it started setting my stomach. I carried on doing the, the back exercises and all the rest of it. And I was lying on my side in bed and then suddenly I felt it. It was huge relief and release. And it went, whoa. And I was like, oh, my God, I know it's all over now. It's just <laughs> amazing. It's finished. It's gone. And I said, ah, hang on. I want to relive that. So I went and milked it, that, <laughs> that whole, that whole relief and release thing. And I went through it again and again and again, visualizing how it felt because it was a really powerful release and relief. And then more things came to my mind. I came to understand, you know, what has happened here is I was in this vibration for all the pain time and all the problem time. Right. And then suddenly I went to another vibration altogether, which was a much happier, balanced, harmonious vibration. And it was the transfer from this vibration to this vibration that gave me the, ah. Oh. Mm. And it was fascinating for me because then I started to see that the amount of time it took me and the strength of the, ah, oh, the relief and the release was um, how bad it was. And it wasn't particularly bad, but I'm now in an awareness place that is very different. You know, before I wouldn't have noticed the R probably as much. Mm -hmm. I would have noticed something. I wouldn't have known instantly that it was over. Right. Um, I wouldn't have known that um, I must milk it because <laughs> yeah. this is a, a wow factor. I wouldn't have known that I've gone from one vibration to another fairly quickly. And I wouldn't have known that the in between the one vibration and the other was the R. Mm -hmm. And those things I wanted to bring out, I want people to understand that's how it feels mm -hmm. and that there was the only thing stopping me from going from the one vibration to the other quicker was my understanding that this is possible. This is how it works. You know, was the understanding of the, the modus operandi of how everything fits together and how it works. And, you know, next time I know it's going to be quicker and quicker and quicker because I can now visualize instead of, what I did to move from one vibration to the other was I distracted myself with all the back, back exercise routines. Mm, okay. And because of the distraction, I was allowed to get back into the harmony because I wasn't focusing on the issues. All right. But you could also do it a combination of ways. You can distract yourself while you're also visualizing yourself in that harmonious place. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe next time when I'm focusing on both those aspects, I'll be able to speed it up even quicker to get that, that relief and release. And of course, you know, I'd say within about 10 minutes, I was asleep after I'd milked it, thought it all through and say, you know, I must tell you guys on the podcast um, that this is how it all worked. Yeah. But I, I think it's a really important um, understanding of the process that when people start grasping and understanding it and owning it, um, they'll be able to shift their issues much, much quicker. Yeah, that, that's really cool. First of all, that, like you said, you have this knowledge, you have this information, you probably have more than most practitioners do because you know the Jinshin and you know these other things that you've been, these modalities that you've been studying and practicing since you were very young. I mean, you probably know more about these healing things than anybody I know. So, I mean, that's wonderful to have all that in your back pocket. But what's even more cool, and I, I had this little scene playing in my head. I have the scene of you doing what you just described, and then I have a parallel scene where there's like an alternate you or something who's in a doctor's office. And the doctor and, and the alternate, you are carrying on this conversation and you go through that kind of transition you talked about where everything just felt better. And the doctor says something like, do you feel better? And he, and you say in your alternate form, oh yeah, I feel great now. And the doctor's looking at you like, what on earth is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you come to me then? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. That is so um, cool. I mean, 
it sounds it, strange it, it, to talk it's about. Impossible. It, it sounds so strange to talk about feeling that, that it's really cool that you went through a sickness because that's really what you went through. But it is because the way you went through it. Yeah, but you know me. I love sickness. <laughs> no, you, love, you love things that people say, ah, what the hell is he talking about? But that's why it has no power in me. That's why I can change it quickly. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, unless Walt had been with me for as long as he has and understood who I am, you would not necessarily believe what I'm telling you or understand it fully or or grasp it or appreciate it. So I appreciate you for understanding me because you've been <laughs> around for so long and had to listen to me for two years, um, <laughs> one, one hour a week. So, um, Take out you know, add, and insert volunteered to, and you'll be, you'll have it perfect. But other than that, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it's difficult to describe to people what I've just gone through and, and how yeah. to understand it and how to then implement it into their own lives. So, you know, it's, it's a journey. Well, one good thing is even if you were to explain that to somebody who doesn't know the stuff that we know, at the very least, they could pick up your enthusiasm. Yeah. That helps. You know, yeah. they don't, they may not, they may think you're crazy. They may not understand anything <laughs> of what you're talking about, but the enthusiasm is unmistakable. Mm. And that enthusiasm can actually carry a lot. It's just, and the clarity, I think, can really help people because, you know, I, I can kind of explain the process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, other people may have said, oh, I felt the relief and the release or other aspects of it, but they may not clearly understand the whole process that it goes through. And um, I think that's where I have a gift to give to people is that is the clarity and the process and, and the whole method of how it works because I do play with this often and clearly. You were talking also about um, what it felt like at the moment of release. And, and I don't remember exactly what you said, but basically it passed through your entire body. It was like you felt this whole wave pass through. And when you said that, I was recalling my own experience that I've documented here on the show quite a bit, not so much lately, uh, from about uh, two years ago where I had hurt my knees to the point where I could barely even walk, did some work to to heal them, managed to heal them within about a week. But the, the main event that I went through that made the biggest difference, I, I think I experienced something similar to what you described. I didn't think of it that way. I didn't mm. think of it as a major release, but I, looking back, I realized it was a major release. I think what was actually happening experientially for me was just that, Oh, I don't feel pain right now. That was it. That's as far as my mind could go. But that was plenty. I mean, just mm. after having constant pain for weeks at a time, to have no pain was a big deal. But you described something that was almost euphoric. And I'm thinking, wow, that's that's a really cool, high level of awareness of your own body and your own spirit. It's... Um... It was significantly clear to me, um, and the best words, which Abram, of course, came up with, are the words relief and release, and that mm. is exactly those words fitted to the T. Yeah. The other thing that was so clear to me was how I had tuned my body from one vibration to another one. Mm-hmm. And it was in the transition of going from the one radio station to the other radio station that I had the relief and the release. And that clarity I've never had before, and I've never really understood or appreciated before, that the relief and the release is the expression of changing your vibration. Ah, yes, right. Sure. It was very sense. new to me. It was something like, ah, I never put the two and two together before. Mm -hmm. Never. Well, again, it makes sense. The thing that I am also taking away from what you described is it sounds to me like the two vibrations. You described the two vibrations beautifully. Here's the one where you're feeling sick. Here's the other, the other one where you had the relief and release and you got the aftermath of that. When you described those two, you didn't actually like value them in terms of this was this much and that was that much or anything like that. But I got the sense that they were vibrationally very, very different, like completely different vibrational levels. And that I think is significant because as Abraham has pointed out, most often we humans have a very difficult time transitioning from one energy level to a completely different energy level that quickly. The example being the, the, what that they give most often is something like somebody who's in anger or depression can't just can't reach joy. It's just too far up the scale. Mm -hmm. you know, but you sound like you made a really large leap. 
and that's significant. I think I think you're right, and the thing the 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 thing that proves that is the bigness of the ah oh, the relief and the release of the whole process, yeah. um, and that means I probably change vibrational scale quite high. But don't don't forget, I'm, I'm changing vibrational scale on that subject, right? Not necessarily all subjects or right, right. all things that are going on in my life, but on that specific issue, I changed from there to there. But that's now, funny that from my lot... perspective. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm, what I'm trying to point out is that it doesn't change you altogether. It does change you on that subject. And people okay. need to understand the importance of um, changing vibration on different subjects. So if you've okay. got a big, big issue with relationships and you keep on having the same terrible relationships again and again, even though you change your partners, then you need to understand that that is a subject that you've got a problem with mm -hmm. and that you, if you change the subject at any time, instead of focusing on, am I going to get another terrible partner? You're focusing on something like, Oh, I love my cat and oh, I love it when they purr and it's just beautiful mm -hmm. when you're stroking it and, and all the rest. So you're changing the subject so you can change your vibration. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, it's something I always want to bring up, up in people. Um, I made quite a few comments on Facebook recently. Um, that would be good to maybe go through a little bit. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. I also wanted to add something to what you just said because I think it's significant. You, you differentiated between subjects. And because we humans can only focus on one thing at a time in our human state, we tend to think that whatever we're focusing on is the end all and be all of our life. But as you point out, I mean, it's one piece of the life on one subject that we're currently focused on. And we could be experiencing something different a moment later just by focusing on something else. That's why the whole pivot thing works when you redirect your attention just to petting a cat or something like that, because it just puts us onto a different subject. Um, but experientially, it just feels like oh, I feel better. I feel worse. We don't. It's it's like our our subconscious mind isn't really noticing that we're doing all this very subtle stuff. All it knows is here's what I feel. Hmm. And that is the simplicity of life: is that we can only focus on one subject at a time, mm -hmm. and it either feels good or feels bad, heading towards what you want, heading away from what you want. So. I love that because it really points to the simplicity of how everything works. And mm. that is so powerful and so important and so right. And so because we get so flustered with the confusion of how everything's supposed to work or does work or doesn't work. And That's really it is so incredibly simple. I was going to say, God damn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> God damn simple. Um, <laughs> what you needed to do was throw in an American Southern accent. You would have been great. <laughs> Strong enough to plow the horse. You. Um, yeah. So draw it out. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the, the thing that I was trying to point out with the, with a specific subject was this, um, even though Louis had an epiphany, he had a transition, he experienced a, a strong relief and release, he even milked it. Um, Louis was still Louis on the other side, but changed on that subject. Yes. So all the other subjects together make up who you are, but that one subject had a relief and release. Yeah. It's interesting and how one subject can have that big of an impact. Impact on that subject, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it yeah. feels like at the time, yeah. it feels like your entire life at that moment. Well, it is because that is the subject I was focused on. So, right. it, and, and you can only focus on one thing at a time. So it was everything. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So you're completely correct. Yep. But on the other side, you know, all the other subjects kick in and they make up who you are and you start manifesting those again. You know, it's like you've still got all these programs running in the background. That's what right. I'm trying to point out. Yeah, the, the programs didn't stop subjects. running. They were probably influenced though. I mean, especially Probably. anything that was Probably. that was like further out of vibrational alignment with, with what this epiphany was, they were probably influenced for the better in some way. It, it was great because of the incredible clarity, the thing that happened after the relief and the release, the first thought that came to my mind was it's over with absolute mm. incredible certainty and understanding and clarity. It's finished. And how many people can say, you know, you just brought up and you had all this, 
that in one second, once, all, well, probably took about two seconds to have the, the aha, in those two seconds to be able to say, I know it's finished, it's done. And that was, that was what I really appreciated as well, was like, I know it's over. And it was. Mm-hmm. And I went to sleep soon. I, I had even some time to milk it and, and to think about it and to, you know, think how I'd talk on the show about it. Um, but that was it. After that, I fell asleep, wake up the next morning, fine, you know. I'm curious about one thing because I'm recalling another story I told here on the show about a time very recently where I literally unintentionally made myself sick. I was taking a shower and I was playing out a little scenario in my head that was really not a very healthy one to play out. It had a lot of stuff on it that I didn't like, but I was doing it anyway because that's something I do. And I literally ended up making myself feel weakened to the point where I was going to fall on the floor, ready to throw up, ready to just, you know, pass out everything and realize what I was doing. I, I, it instantly occurred to me, oh my God, I'm making myself sick. I didn't intend to, but all of this thought pattern I've been doing is putting me into the sickness. And it happened within about five or 10 minutes of doing it. I said, okay, well, all I have to do then is reverse the thought pattern, start focusing on stuff I prefer. And I knew as soon as I thought that, that, it was going to work. That doesn't mean though, that the next five to 10 minutes weren't pretty difficult because they were, even though I was already starting to reverse it, I was still going through the symptoms that I had already set myself up for. So I knew that it was going to get better, which it did, but I wasn't instantly getting the kind of physical reaction that I was, that I would have liked to have had at that time. I got it fairly quickly, but not instantly. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong in saying, it sounds like you got the physical reaction quickly. Um, yeah, the physical reaction was pretty much instantaneous after the yeah, event. That, that's a big um, deal. And there was no doubt in my mind, and it was accurate, that I had completely, I suppose, tuned into the new station and I was fine. Yeah, um, right. I don't really know how to put it. Um, I don't want to say completely well, because there's still aspects of my body that have got little tiny little bit of irritations here or there. But on that subject, I knew that it was completely, completely gone um, without any hesitation or doubt. And it was within a matter of seconds from terrible to completely fine. And and it wasn't just a knowing in in the sense of an intellectual knowing. It was a feeling knowing. That's the, that's the part that I think is intriguing. It was a complete intuitive knowing. Yes. Knowing that's not a understanding or, or anything it was, this is the way it is, and there's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. So you say you'd never had something like that happen before. Not I'm with going... a level of clarity. No, I have had that happen on numerous occasions. I've had relief and release. Quick relief. Um, okay. But not with that clarity. That's why I really wanted to bring it up, because I think if people start studying what I've just said, and they start <laughs> – making as they probably will some kind of practice out of the whole thing. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> it, it'll be worthwhile to understand what I just said. So, is... so what do you think was different? I mean, you said it yourself this time you had a level of clarity that you didn't have before. What changed? What changed? I don't know. Besides the level of clarity, what changed? Um, what was different from the last experience of having the relief and the releases? There was no, um, instant knowing that um, it was over. Um, the other experiences I've had, like going into the vortex, was very different. This wasn't like going into the vortex. This was changing from one vibration to another. So when I spent those five days in the vortex, having these incredible ideas flown to my head that made me salivate and so excited and all the rest of it, mm-hmm. that was a very different experience to... Yeah to um this little transition um massively different so you know i've had a lot of different experiences uh, but i've had a lot of little healing experiences so what were they like um so they've dulled in, uh, they've dulled <laughs> from the point of view that there's been so many they've um plus they don't measure up to they the were one never you just this had. clear yeah they were never this clear you know 
because, you know, I explained to you that you don't really have an out-of-body experience, you don't leave your body, you change your frequency and you see things differently, I'm starting to apply that to my healing, to every aspect of my life. It's what am I tuning into is the question I'm asking now. I'm not asking myself I'm out-of-body or here or there or doing this or that. I'm now saying what am I tuning my vibration into to see. And by the way, some and, listeners are going to remember that last week you and Amy and myself, we agreed we were going to talk about out of body experiences this mm, week, mm. but since Amy isn't here, we're kind of saving that. So you're you're giving us a little bit of a teaser, I guess. But uh, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but um, uh, that will be a topic that we discuss. But uh, I, it is interesting. It is fascinating that you just you, you experience it differently now. I mean, I've never been one who's done a lot of out of body. Like I mentioned last week, mm. I've had really one, and it was fun. It was interesting. It wasn't something that I was you know eager to go out and try to replicate as soon as possible, but it was it was definitely a fun experience. Mm. But you've actually been through a number of them, and now you're to the point where, what that they, they just it isn't quite as important to experience it that way. What is it? Mm. So something we should go into without a body. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quite a topic. So <laughs> it's a great question. Um, Repeat the question. I'll do my best. Uh, essentially, I'm asking you, you have a history of doing a number of out-of-body experiences. You, you relayed that to Amy and I during the show and also yeah. um, during post-show and pre-show last week. Um, and Is it that, that important to me anymore? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't seem as important because of this experience. Um, there's one thing I've always said that I don't like going to psychics. I don't know anybody else to give me the information. I want to have a direct perception. I want to understand it myself it has been very, very important for me whole life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So out of body is a personal direct experience. There's no doubt about it. Sure. Now in the beginning and still now on occasions, I, I lack the control in the out of body experience that I would like. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, because it's a very different world and I haven't got there yet. I know there are masters that have, that have that level of clarity when they're out of the body. They can bilocate. They can be in numerous places at the same time, talk to different students, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, and, and be clear. So that level of clarity is not with me yet. So, and I'm always after clarity. Mm -hmm. So when I'm awake and speaking to Walt now, I feel very clear. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I like the awake out of body experiences or the, awake tuning into different vibrations yeah. because then I really do feel a little more. Um, it's not control. I don't desire control that much. Um, awareness, clarity just seems to be slightly higher. So to me, <clears throat> you know, I've flown to the moon and out of body and a whole lot of other things, but it, it doesn't feel that clear to me. I, I didn't have the amount of control I really wanted, although I had, significant amount of control um in that specific experience but um it's it's just i'm always having that great desire for greater clarity um, i, I want to know for myself you know mm. it's down to me to have the experiences and play with them yeah so ultimately i think that's the answer to my question the answer is the level of clarity mm -hmm. the level of clarity with this was so much greater than the level of clarity had been with any of those out-of-body experiences obes that uh, they they were mild by comparison. Now I'll bet you there, there's there's, a, there's another factor involved here, Walt, and that is the out of body experiences were in the past. True, this happened yesterday. Yeah, that's, so, that's, that makes a difference, <laughs> and and that's a huge difference because I tend to now want to leave my past behind. Mm. I'm now always focused on where I'm going. I'm not so focused on what was there anymore, mm -hmm. and that is um that is big with me now, and it's becoming bigger that I don't need to hold grudges or remember certain people or want to keep in contact with my old classmates. I now say universal law of attraction. You know, I, I am in a vibrational match to now. Let me draw those people. to me. Um, that, that's a powerful statement all by itself because it is in, if I contrast it with what many people would say, particularly those who don't necessarily follow the same kinds of practices we talk about here on the show, although including people who follow the practices as well, but especially for those who don't, this idea of just, you know, 
um, getting into a point of clarity and that clarity is a wonderful thing and you can actually leave all your past behind sounds like voodoo. It sounds like nonsense. You know, they're, they're so used to living in their past and having their past recur and dominate their lives in many cases that the, the idea of leaving that all behind, it may sound good. I'm sort of some sort of tangential, you know, like, oh, wow, that would be a wonderful thing if it happened. But I don't believe it'll happen. You know, it, that, it, it's that kind of uh, reaction. You're experiencing what most people would consider impossible. Well, that's that problem, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I can only talk what I'm experiencing. I, <laughs> um, I, I, I struggle like they would struggle to believe oh, I can leave my past behind. I struggle that they want to carry it. Mm. You know, it's, it's it's a similar struggle. You know, just because I've, my vibrations here, they there, it's difficult to see. Or well, why would you want to carry the weight of that shit around with you? You know, it's going to mm. drown you. It's going to it's going to pull you down. It's going to ball and chain you. It's going to you know, um, <laughs> it, it's not something I can understand anymore. You know, I, um, a police officer knocked on my door a little bit earlier and said to me, "Oh, did you hear anything or see anything?" going on in the area and I said no sorry and I said what happened they said though yeah there was a white male who was being chased by um, two other males uh, that were carrying those were her words Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was like okay (laughs) and my wife said she did hear some disturbance in when she was in the garden earlier but I was asleep because mm. I didn't have much sleep last night, so I took a nap this afternoon. Yeah, after that, I can So I missed, I missed all that. And, yeah, um, right. and, you know, my wife was saying what happened, and I told her, and I said, Sep, so she knows what that means. And I said, it's someone else's problem. It's nothing to do with me. Sep. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Game mm. over. And um, <clears throat> it's more and more how I live my life is, you know, what's my problem I will work on, and, and where I want to go is what I'll work on, but the rest is Sep. <laughs> you even got it down to its own acronym. I <laughs> know. <laughs> and That's I made that up. <laughs> I'm the first one who made that You're up. the first one. <laughs> yes, you can credit Louis de Souza. <laughs> My first meme <laughs> set, <laughs> Louis de Souza. <Yeah. laughs> okay, well, there are millions of Facebook users saying, Seth, what the heck is Seth? Seth. <laughs> I'm not finding it on a Google search. What's going on? Oh, uh, dear. Yeah, I was going to bring up some of these Facebook things if I can come up with them easily enough. Oh, yeah. You mentioned also before the show that there was a Facebook thing. So I'm curious to see what you're bringing in here. While you're doing that, I'm going to take a If you haven't of it. noticed by now, 2020 was designed for you to get back in touch with your soul and raise your consciousness. Hmm. So while you're looking for it, I'm going to take 30 seconds and remind people who are not yet uh, subscribed by downloading the app onto their phones to download the app onto your phones because that's the go-to way to listen to LOA Today. It's also the go-to way to get all the extras that our co-hosts are sharing with you, including Dan Mangana's ebook, The Money Game, and Cindy Chavez's ebook, uh, The Lovely Magician's Guide to Soulmate Success, and and Dan's uh, audio course, Beyond Intention, and, and there's more coming too, so... Um, I mean, you really want to be downloading and using it. And I hope you are not just downloading and putting it onto the phone, but you're also listening to the episodes and listening to the various content and reading the various content that we're giving you because we're giving it to you for the, for the reason that we want to help you really achieve that, your daily dose of happy, not just through listening to the show, but also through your own efforts, through your own growth. So do both and be sure that you tell a friend to tell a friend so that more and more people can find out about the LOA Today app too. So what do you have there, Louis, now that you've done your little search? (laughs) So, you know, somebody was saying that if you haven't noticed by now, which I find condescending. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good way to start. (laughs) 2020 was designed for you to get back in touch with your soul. So I'm out of touch with my soul. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And raise your consciousness. So, So I'm... Consciouslessness, um, mm. I'm unconscious. So, so you can evaluate your life. Okay. So a lot of people responded very positively, positively to it. Now, this mm. one individual I was talking to you about before the show, I love his, he says, I designed my 2020 to just be able to keep doing 
uh, to keep on doing what I love to do and to release more emotional resistance as well as keep growing as a person. Now, I've mm. loved this guy over many podcasts, uh, many years while doing the podcasts. I've seen him in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group mm. um, comment to people's comments very accurately. And he has a clarity I admire. So I'm always saying, and I'm always encouraging him and always saying to him, you know, I like what you're saying and I agree with it and all the rest of it. Um, <clears throat> so I said to him again, I love the subtle way of you saying that you can make 2020 do whatever you want it to do, not necessarily mm -hmm. what somebody else thinks like the post stated. Right. So, you know, I went through that whole podcast with you, Walt, at some stage talking about tearing memes apart. <laughs> oh, I remember that you one. Remember yes. that one? <laughs> yeah. So I, um, when, when people aren't very accurate, I, I like to enhance the accuracy of those memes. And I found out, and it was pointed out to me, and it's very accurate, that the problem with memes is they're trying to make them short. That's true. <laughs> the brevity has its and, and when they make them short, they're are open to too much interpretation, which, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody did describe fully what they meant by this previous meme, it would probably be accurate because they try to condense it. Um, there are flaws in the fluidness and the correctness and the accuracy mm -hmm. of the whole sure. message. Um, and I said to the guy, maybe you'd like to pop onto my podcast on Monday's law of attraction one day. And he says, thanks for the offer. I'll certainly consider it. So, um, you know, at some stage I'd love to have, and his name is, T H I J S Tish Grun, which I'm guessing is Dutch or Flemish. I don't know. Okay. Um, and yeah, so, and he's the first and only person I've ever asked to join me on the podcast. Right? Really? Oh, okay. Well, I'll be interested to hear uh, what he has to say if he decides. And to only come. because I've watched him over years and mm -hmm. seeing that his, his, um, the way he responds to everything is very clear and accurate. Well, and, from the part um, that you that you relayed already, he sounds like he is very much in tune with the kinds of things you tend to tell me. So very much so, like it. very yeah. much so. And of course, because when somebody's vibrational match, then you yeah. pick up on them quicker and easier. And of course, that's why I exactly. bumped into him. Um, I'm just wondering if I can find the other one. It's quite interesting as well. <clears throat> We almost need to have our own theme music for this for, you know, like Jeopardy has their little theme for writing down the final answer. We need something like that for this. <laughs> um, let me see if I can remember. Uh, Somebody was asking which books I recommended. So I recommended some books there. Mm-hmm. Um, which was, of course, Illusions. Yeah, I, I can almost predict what's on this list. Illusions is on there. The Law of Attraction. Initiation. Yeah, yeah, Initiation is definitely going to be on there. Yeah. And another one you haven't heard of, maybe, is The Tiger's Fang by Paul Twitchell. That was You've told me about that one, but I haven't looked into it. The fact that that book was written in three days is just astounding. <laughs> Um, hey, so, when you get yeah, the I'll, message out, you get it out. That's all there is to it. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the rest on Facebook, but um, is 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 it live streaming today? Is there anybody chatting? Yeah, we're live streaming. We, we have listeners. Nobody's really saying anything, but uh, people are okay. tuned in live. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to talk about today. Um, that was all I really wanted to do. That, well, that's a pretty cool story all by itself. Um, let's see. A couple of things that I've been working on lately. Um, I had, of course, I've got the basic app out, which I've been working on for months now. And that's talk about relief and release. It wasn't an instantaneous relief and release. It's more, more like an ongoing, continuous relief and release. It just gets better and better as days goes on, days go on. But I also find that my tendency to want to perfect has kicked into gear. So. Uh, like I was going through uh, Dan Magena's ebook today because I had noticed previously there were some certain editing changes that I wanted to make to make it read easier and, you know, proper punctuation and all that kind of stuff. So I, I was just kind of nitpicking and going through all that today. 
And it, I mean, it's, it's an exercise that probably most people won't even notice that I did because most people don't pay attention to those kinds of things, but I noticed it. I, I feel it. And I know that the next time I look at his ebook, I'm going to feel better about it. And in fact, it's already, um, manifested, if you will, a certain shift because, uh, you, I mean, you know how these ebooks work. I, you, I think you've probably written a few of them. Um, they're, they're teaching, they're, they're about teaching and, and walking people through step by step through whatever process you're trying to teach them and so forth. And usually there's, uh, some sort of reference to what other people have successfully done when they've tried to use them. And here's some extra links you can click on to get more information, you know, all the usual stuff that you find. When I got to the, to the testimonial parts, I don't know what it was as I'm reading through them and, and I'm editing them. I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't it be cool to have these people on a program just to tell their stories all at the same time? And I think that happened simply because I allowed myself to give in to this urge, this impulse to make little tweaks to this thing that was already basically done. I just wanted to make it read nicer. And in the process of doing that, an idea came to me and passed it along to Dan and Dan wrote back, well, well, sure. Yeah. Any particular ones that uh, grab you? And I said, well, whichever ones you can get that can come on the show at the same time, because I want them all on the show at the same time. Cause that to me is where the cool part is. You have mm -hmm. four or five, six different people saying they followed the same process, got, you know, X results and the X results were all great. Boy, does that have a powerful impact? I mean, that's what testimonials are supposed to do. But when you have people in the same place, all saying it at the same time, it feels different, I think. So there, there, there was a book on persuasion that I studied at one stage and um, they were talking about the factor involved in humans that they desire more people to believe something for them to want to believe it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And your guess that it would have a greater effect when there are more people there. Yes, it will because man has that huge desire that if millions of people are believing it and there must be some truth in it, you know? Right, right. <laughs> and of course, if you take the Orthodox religions of the world, from my point of view, um, it's a complete <laughs> flawed philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, did I say that? Um, <laughs> you can send your nasty emails too. <laughs> um, so you, you, you know, when it comes to all that, it's also important to, to explain it in greater detail. <clears throat> I'm not saying that they are flawed for everybody and all mm -hmm. the time. Now I was in one of them for quite a long time. Sure. Um, and it did help me during that period. So it's mm -hmm. not that they are completely flawed. What they're doing is they're building contrast in you. Yeah. They're forcing you to understand what you believe and not necessarily what they're, you're, you're told to believe. So there's, there's immense value in them, even though they may not be on the right track um, <laughs> all the time with everything. But um, again, I've always said to anybody on any religion, um, if you're feeling happy and comfortable uh, in it, then it is exactly where you should be. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Because the feeling aspect is really... That's how you know. That's how you know. Exactly. And um, I always admire somebody who's really confident on their own belief because I truly come across very few. <laughs> I don't I know why I'm thinking very, of this, but I'm going to tell you something that, that uh, has been going on that for whatever reason is being triggered by what you're saying. And I, I, I for the life of me, can't make the connection, but maybe you'll see what it is. Um, there's a Facebook group that I started a number of years ago and that I still administer um, that's for the local area where I live called Farmington Valley Happenings. And the Farmington Valley is... Oh, cool. Of what? Farmington Valley Happenings. Okay. The Farmington Valley is, is to the northwest of Hartford, Connecticut. It's, you know, I don't know, five or six towns all kind of in one cluster, so to speak. And uh, so it's just devoted to stuff that happens in the Farmington Valley. And it, I, it's something I kind of started on a lark and it kind of grew and grew. It's got about 6,500 members now. So, you know, I keep it going and sometimes I wonder why, <laughs> but I keep going. And, uh, of course, with what's been going on here in this country with, uh, the various things that most people are focused on, there's COVID, there's racial tensions, there's the economy, 
all this kind of stuff. All those things touch the valley because they touch everything else too. And so I've, to a certain extent, allowed them in as conversation points. And every once in a while, uh, the people who are in the valley, who are members of the group, um, particularly those who have, shall we say, a, um, a political viewpoint to push, let's put it that way, will get involved in a little tug of war trying to get a, a, a little leverage over the other side. And it can be quite strenuous at times in terms of the efforts that they put in. Lately, uh, there have been numerous efforts to get posts banned. In other words, they want me to kick out certain posts because they don't fit the narrative of one side or the other. And given the, you may not be aware of this, but here in the U.S. right now, there's a great big divide that it has become quite acrimonious between left and right. And it's, as we're approaching an election in November, it's probably as loud as it's been in years. Um, that divide is leading to some pretty high passions, pretty, pretty strong passions. As one would say some great contrast. Some great contrast, huge <laughs> contrast going on. I think that's where this is coming from. But anyway, um, there was one post this one person put. It was about COVID. It was about, um, what's it about? Oh, I think it's about, uh, oh, what's that? It's, it's the alternative drug that President Trump thinks is so wonderful and that others are saying, oh, it's not all that great and so forth. Hy Hydrox. What? Leech. What is it? Leech. Leech. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was that one too. But... <laughs> no, it's hydroxychloroquine or something like that. I, I, I can't remember what the name of it is. Quinine stuff. Hydrochloroquine, I think it's called. Um, anyway, somebody had posted about that, and that's a big uh, point of, of um, discussion in Discord right now. And a whole bunch of people have demanded that I remove the post. Now, the post isn't 100% accurate. It's got a bit, a bit of a misleading side to it. Um, but it's not disrespectful. That's one of the things I look for. I, I try to keep the conversation at least respectful. You know, be, be respectful of the other side and so forth. And it's a little bit on the edge, but it's not over the edge. And so I'm constantly being bombarded, like bombarded being measured in terms of probably 20, 25 people have demanded that it be removed. And so it's constantly popping up in my Facebook feed. And I keep saying, no, 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 because, you know, that I got to keep it relatively even keel. Everybody has to have their fair share and so forth. And it's been fascinating because, first of all, it points to a trend that I'm seeing more and more of that is a little disconcerting, but it's... It, from my perspective these days, it's more amusing than anything else. The desire to shut somebody else up, to keep somebody else from talking, you know, restricting free speech, essentially. And, and if I point out to somebody who's trying to do that, that's what the other side is trying to do to them. They'll acknowledge it for a split second and then they'll go right back to it again. <laughs> so they're really pushing this contrast, right? They're pushing it to, to the utter extreme. And I think, this is probably why I'm bringing it up. In the past, this would have been a big, big emotional point for me. And today, it's more of like, oh, okay, you need an answer to that? Here you go. I'm done. I don't have the connection that I used to have. But they still do. They still do. And it's the perspective of seeing that from a point where, honestly, I really don't care all that much, is just strange. It's a weird place to be because it's not where I've been most of my life. So maybe that's well, where the connection is to what you were talking about. This is like you're this, growing this, up, oh. you're becoming a spiritual yeah. <laughs> individual who's learned the spiritual detachment and uh, you start to see the perfection of the contrast. And I'm very proud of you. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. I it mean, is. I might have said it facetiously, happened, but um, you can see it clearly in me. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. And now you're starting to see it in yourself, and you you're you're going through a phase that a lot of people go through: is am I still human? Is this still right? <laughs> am I just a dispassionate? uncaring individual and you start learning that that's all BS that you can yeah. leave behind. If that um, and then you I start realizing all I'm doing is focusing on what I want. And if I keep my alignment, if I 
if I focus on remaining happy more often of the time, it's the greatest gift I can give to anybody and everybody. And Mm -hmm. that's all I care about now. The rest is your shit. Play with it. (laughs) All you want, nothing to do with me, Sep, go on, you know, it's so and so and so forth. So yeah, that's what happens. It's, it's a classic dilemma of somebody who's growing spiritually. And I think part of the dilemma for me is I've gotten to the point now where I almost just want to hand the keys over to somebody else because it's just not interesting to me anymore. The only interesting part is watching what they're doing beyond that. I don't want to engage in it. I mean, occasionally I get somebody who makes a direct appeal to me. You know, I really would appreciate it if you would remove this post, blah, 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 blah. And so I, I usually accommodate them in, by giving them a response of some kind, you know, and um, I've, I've actually managed to calm a few people down that way. They, they're, they're kind of, you know, dismissing of me, but that's all right. I'm, I could live with that. <laughs> it's not a yeah. big deal. <laughs> um, a long time ago, I gave up the idea that I needed people to like me. <laughs> well, you know, I do like people to like me, but I don't need to bend over backwards to make it happen. I mean, mm. if they like me, they mm. like me. If they don't, okay, sorry, you know. Next. <laughs> yeah. I think the clarity there is the word need them to like me. I don't need yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really need that. I don't think it is. It's fascinating nice to go through. People it. appreciate you and like you and understand you. It's nice to be seen. Really is nice to be seen. Of course it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had an experience um, like that at the beach now that I'm thinking about it. Completely different subject. But I had an experience. I was um, sitting at the beach. This was kind of an interesting thing. My wife is the sun worshiper, not me. I go along because, first of all, we figured out a way I can go. I don't like spending a lot of time in the sun. It's very uncomfortable. Well, I have to pause you there. You used a word, which, two words, uh, which brings back a story just quickly. You said sun worship. <laughs> this story is being interrupted by another story. Here we go. <laughs> sun worshiper so there's, there was this one guy when i was a student he believed that god was in the sun ah okay completely totally and utterly and it still blows me away that somebody can believe that <laughs> <laughs> and i was just thinking your wife's worshiping that god it was so cool <laughs> carry on <laughs> I'll have to have you have a conversation with Alex King one time because we did a show about flat earthers versus round earthers and, and she gets all burned up about flat earthers. Like, Oh, you guys are absolutely nuts. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> uh, it's fun. But uh, anyway, start you, bringing up all the information that I was taught for those two hours. Yeah, right. Sworn by this one guy. <laughs> Fascinating. Really, really. Yeah. But to continue my story, the, um, uh, the reason we went that particular day was, in part because she wanted to connect with friends of hers that she has known since her early days in school. Um, they were having a get together, girlfriends, and uh, it wasn't really an event that I would want to go to. So despite the fact that she's the one who enjoys going to the beach, I go along because I want to spend time with her and we have a canopy so I can stay in the shade most of the time, which cuts down on my UV exposure and so forth. And I can enjoy that. I mean, I, I enjoy looking at the ocean and kind of just de-stressing and letting stuff go just by, enjoying the calm of the ocean and the waves and all that kind of stuff. The sounds, I love the sounds. So peculiar as it might be halfway through our time at the beach, she left to go visit her friends and I'm sitting there by myself under the canopy on the beach. I'm thinking, okay, well, this is a little bit different. So got out a little lunch, ate some lunch and I'm sitting there enjoying. And uh, of course, one of the nice things about a beach is there's lots of eye candy all over the place, you know? So I'm enjoying all that. <laughs> this one young woman comes walking up, Kind of uh, dirty passing. old man. You. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> she comes walking up, and she's passing where I am sitting under my canopy, and beautiful young lady, and and she gets like within five feet of me and stops and turns at me, gives me a big smile and says, "Hi, how you doing?" I said, "I'm great. How are you?" <laughs> I didn't know what to do, <laughs> and then she went her merry way. I thought. I Whoa. can. He's not supposed to speak. <laughs> well, that, that, that was different. Yeah. <laughs> like, what What just happened? <laughs> I mean, it was fine. So, Nothing wrong with it. It was just, it was just, wow. All of a sudden, I, I think what happened was she connected to something that I was feeling. Because I was feeling great. Mm-hmm. I was smiling. Mm-hmm. I was looking around. I was enjoying everything. I think she was. And people can that. feel that. And, and, and those who are in vibrational harmony to a dude respond quite yeah. often. Yeah, they do. It was just a little, and you get the most amazing and weird and wonderful people speaking to you and coming up to you and talking to you. Oh yeah, it's really enjoyable. 
It and is. I love that aspect because those people at that time are a vibrational match. They're right. not your family. They're not your friend. They're not right. people that have got all this stuff already. These are people that are brought there because you are a certain vibration. There is a certain vibration. There. Bam. Mm-hmm. You come together. And I love those people. It's fun love because, it, I mean, we get a lot of people more often now at the beach who are just stopping by and saying hello for like five seconds on their way to wherever they're going. Mm-hmm. There's one couple that we met about. Uh, I found the coronavirus business. started that really. To a large it probably degree. did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, sure. Um, I think it was a weekend ago we met them and, and they live in a town that's about a half an hour from here in Connecticut. And so we kind of had that in common because we were down in the beaches in Rhode Island. So that's a bit of a drive for, for both of us. And uh, saw him there yesterday, or uh, Saturday, rather. And he comes walking by and says, hey, Simsbury, because I live in Simsbury. And you're like, oh, hey, how how you doing? You know, I, I barely remember the guy. Like, oh, yeah, that's the guy from Southington, you know. You know why is he shouting out? Well, yeah, he we had that little connection. But he was so enthusiastic about it. And that's what was getting my attention, the enthusiasm. You just have to be in one place where you're you're high vibing and people get enthusiastic around you. So, so Walter, I just wanted to tell you something that I wanted to say, and I'll go into it in more detail before, so I'm just going to give you the brief gist okay. of it. I was browsing YouTube, and I have a fascination for uh, Zhang Chang, who is an incredible Chinese female singer. Okay. who has, um, they call her the dolphin voice. She has an incredible range and all the rest of it. And I don't mm. know if you know the fifth element. The fifth element has got a song in it that is that was composed to be unsingable. Oh, really? And she can sing it. Oh my. She can go from this really low note to this high note like that. Wow. And um, there was a lady reviewing the three singers who sing the fifth element who are supposedly able to do the full, full thing. And she was listening to the first one and I immediately, as soon as I started hearing her review, this was blown away. This is a master. Mm. This lady is a guru in her field. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind. And it's animation and excitement. And she's listening to, <laughs> she's playing this thing on the little screen there, listening to the sing. And she says, ah, no, that's synthesized over there. And, and you know, her, her whole, her, the expression on her face is just so delicious. And I was like, yeah, I'm sitting in these podcasts and I'm not doing any of those expressions. But, you know, you just look at her face and you can see she's seeing in her audible mind so much more than she's able to express. And, and, you know, we're, she's only giving us like a titbit of what she perceives. Mm-hmm. And you just sit there and you look at this and the, you know, her facial expressions say it all. You can, mm. you can just, ah, oh, and I've watched quite a few of her YouTube videos now and I'll, I'll maybe bring some aspect of her in at some time. And I'd love to get on the show because she is a guru and doesn't know it. You know, mm. I mean, she is a guru in her own right. Um, she's a teacher. She's sung opera all over Europe and all the rest of it. You know, she is, she's a guru on that respect in the human sense. But on the other sense, as a teacher of music, she is stunning. Absolute. And, you know, I've learned more about music with watching a few YouTube videos with her than I've ever known in my entire life. <laughs> really? Wow. Uh, you know, and I've ne- I have very little, if no interest in, in singing. Uh, but because when you've got a master teaching it, you are drawn in in a way that is just delicious. <laughs> That's all I can say. It was just absolutely delicious. I was absolutely stunned just to watch her face while she's critting these guys and she's playing their their music and, and mm, ah, uh, mm, mm. you know, and it's just so expressive and you can, you can see the depth and breadth with which she understands everything that they're saying and the clarity. She's got clarity on her mm-hmm. subject to which I have absolute respect. You know. As you're saying that I'm realizing that it gives me a new way of expressing what it is to be a master. A master is somebody who knows how to clearly express joy because that's what you were mm-hmm. describing. Mm-hmm. In, in their subject. Yeah. 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 And 
they say the ultimate master is somebody who is able to simulate any and any and every thing. So in other words, if you give them a guitar, they can play it. If you want mm-hmm. them to sing, they can sing. If they, if you give them a, a, a Cohen, they will solve a, you know, if they, they'll be able to do anything. And, you know, I've looked at many, many masters. I've never seen one of those guys <laughs> or girls. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some come close, but yeah. Somehow I have a feeling you're going to start seeing more of them. I don't know. It'd be great. Um, I have no great desire to see them or be one, or you know, because I've come to realize that we come to this physical universe to play with the contrast, not to be a guru. Right. Um, but, but you so much more in a to me, I see everybody as a guru now, you know. Yeah, um, sure. As when you live in a high vibration to, space all the time, you're going to attract more high vibrational stuff, and that's a high vibration. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. You know. you, you're going to start. You're going to start. You're already doing it. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> words fail us after a while. <laughs> yeah, they, they do. <laughs> you, you you become more aware of your vibration by what you are attracting into your life and who you're attracting into your life. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And isn't that a wonderful thing? Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious That's because it. you know you've got control of who you, to a large degree, who yeah. you can draw in, who you're going to start drawing into your life based on how you feel. And, and as time goes on, I believe that control continues to increase. The sense of control continues to increase so that we can, if we chose to pick up a musical instrument we've never played before and play it beautifully mm-hmm. because that's the level of joy we're in. Yeah. Level of clarity we've achieved. Yeah. I mean, there are individuals and stories you will hear all over the place of people who've been able to do that. So Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not a rarity at all. Yeah. Well, that's a good place to stop the podcast on. Absolutely. We, I think we're a little bit over. That's all right. We can live with that. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to actually carrying on the conversation with Amy next week about out of body experiences. Mm, Absolutely. We're we're saving that. So that's a good thing. So I love having, having, I love having Amy aboard. She's, uh, she really, um, she brings a lovely vibration to the group. Yeah. Oh, she is so, so high. Love you, Amy. Energy, <laughs> so much enthusiasm. Yeah, we missed you this week, Amy, but we know you'll be back next week. So that'll be good stuff. Okay. So thank you very much. Looking <laughs> forward you, to everybody. having you back. Thank you very much to our live streamers, especially to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.